Hi, I'm going to be showing you to, how to repair a Banjo EV4100 or 4300 uh, valve today. Uh, it's the same process for an EV3100 or 33. First you take this uh, yellow uh, in turn, yellow position indicator off, use a flat blade screwdriver, just pry around the edges and it pops off. Uh, next is going to be the wire. You unscrew it. Uh, there's a rubber grow mat that you got to kind of pull back. You just pull that along the wire. That lets you push the wire in when you need to uh, lift the cap off. So now there's six screws around the outside, and you just uh, remove those a uh, quarter inch. Quarter inch head will unscrew those. That's three and a couple more. So once you get those off, you can uh, push the wire in and lift the top off. It just comes right up. Yep, yeah, got to push it in. It's a little sticky. You kind of think you're going to break it, but then eventually it pops off. So the reason you push that wire in is because it's connected directly to the circuit board. Uh, there's a couple things that go wrong with these. Uh, you got the motor. You got to connect, check the connections of the wires. The relay is usually what goes bad. And then there's two position switches, which use the half moons to uh, tell it when to start and stop. Uh, there's four screws that hold down the circuit board to the gear housing and you just remove those to pull that circuit board up. Uh, again, the, the usual culprit is those relays go bad. Um, that's really the first thing that goes bad. You can replace it uh, four to five times uh, before it needs to before you need to replace the switches or the motor itself. Um, so they actually have quite a bit of lifetime to them. So I've got two, three of the screws now. And that'll just you kind of got to turn it so the switches get unstuck and then you can pull it off. So it's still attached to the motor, but you get a little better look here. You've got a relay, two position switches, a fuse. Um, that's the relay. To get rid of the relay, you have to desolder it. Um, that's a desoldering gun, about 25 bucks at your electronics store and you have to desolder each one of them. It is a little tricky, it takes a little work, but it's doable if you want to do it. Um, then those position switches, just undo those screws with the heads and desolder it, and you can replace those. The motor very rarely goes bad, but you can, you can I'll try and tilt here, but there's two uh, brushes on this motor, it's a DC motor and so you just take a screwdriver and you pry that out and you can see how much of the brush is left. Uh, this motor has plenty of brushes left. Um, even after four or five rebuilds the motor brushes are generally still good. So, But you always want to check to make sure since you have it out uh, if those brushes need replaced. Um, the I guess uh, I'm just talking about uh, the what you want to replace again the switches and the relays uh, the fuse you really don't have to switch and and the gearbox here is you can repair and you can rotate the gears to extend the life 
Um, but even after five, six, seven, eight, nine rebuilds, I've really never had any trouble with the gearboxes other than the seals. Um, so they're really built well. You really shouldn't have to mess with them. And it's probably not worth your time to mess with them. Um, so anyways, those are the things you replace. And uh, uh, if you want to if you want to do it yourself, um, that's kind of how you do it. Uh, if you want to have me do it, uh, I completely replace all those parts, both the switches, the relay, and then I check the motor for wear and the gears. Um, it only costs sixty dollars for a inch and a half valve, and and uh, eighty dollars for a oh sorry, sixty dollars for a inch valve or three quarter inch valve and then uh, eighty dollars for an inch and a half or two inch valve um, if you do 24 volt the relay costs a little more so usually charge an extra 20 bucks for that uh, but really if you've got the time and you're willing to get a desoldering gun uh, you can go ahead and do it yourself so uh, that's about all i've got i'm just putting it back together right now uh, Again, you got to kind of play around to get those switches to seat and get it to sit down. Uh, we're putting the four screws back on the circuit board. And it's really just the same process in reverse. Put your four screws in. Uh, uh, the one thing I will note, if you want your valve to, to open a little... A little differently, you can change those half moon shims on that on that output shaft where those position switch sensors are. And so, if you have another use for this top, you can get it to do basically anything you want in terms of on and off positions uh, by moving those those shims around. And we're just putting the screws back, the circuit board back in. Uh, you do want to check your seal. Um, I didn't do it in this video, but uh, I just because this was for explanatory purposes. But uh, you want to go ahead and uh, make sure your seal is still good, or add a little add a little lube around the seals. So we got that. It's really tricky because the standoffs kind of fall down and you got to scoot them into just the right place. The old design didn't have those. It had permanent stands that you could just screw in. I don't know why they switched to them. I guess to save money. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all you really need to repair these is desoldering gun, uh, Phillips head screw, a quarter inch driver, um, flathead screwdriver and uh, not too difficult uh, if you don't feel you can do that you can always send it in uh, I've fixed many of them uh, had a really good track record and uh, basically uh, even if you don't have a banjo valve if you just have the have a valve that uh, has a motor in it you know doesn't have that instant on off it takes you know a second couple seconds to uh, to move uh, it's the same procedure you you disassemble you take it you take the assembly apart you look for that relay they all have it um, they all have positions uh, sensors switches just like that and those are the two things that mainly fail um, even after five ten years of use I've, I, I've only seen a motor fail when the seals have failed and there's been corrosion in there um, so if you don't let any water or chemicals in to the housing, those motors really should never fail or the gearboxes. Uh, so just tightening everything up. Don't want to over tighten them. So uh, KZ valves are, are the same. You know, they look a little different, but 
They're exactly the same. You have uh, T-Jet. They're a little more difficult because you actually have to cut. Uh, they seal their housing um, ultrasonically, kind of welded together. So you actually have to cut the housing. And then um, I, I 3D print basically a little joiner, um, which lets me uh, re-glue the housing and keep it watertight. All I got to show you, and uh, please contact me uh, at the email address below if you need to. Thank you.